Summertime is one of those timeless jazz standards. It was composed in 1934 by George Gershwin for the 1935 opera Porgy and Bess. Summertime later became popular among jazz musicians and continues to be played to this day. It's a must-know tune for all jazz musicians and fortunately for us, it's very simple and easy to learn. Summertime is in the key of D minor as indicated by one flat in the key signature. One flat also denotes the key of F major, but with so many D minor chords and two five ones in D minor, it's safe to say that D minor is the key for this tune. It has a 16 bar repeating form, which is entirely diatonic to the keys of D minor and its relative major F major. The form starts off with the one chord D minor in the first line before shifting to the four chord G minor in line two. E minor seven flat five A seven is a minor two five, setting us up to return to D minor in line three. A quick major two five at the end of line three modulates us to the relative major F major in the last line. Finally, we're brought back to D minor through the same minor two five one with one final 2-5 in the last bar, closing off the form and bringing us back to the top. Summertime is a great tune for beginners because there aren't too many chords to learn and the form is quite short, only 16 bars. Having said this though, I do find that many new players to jazz music have a hard time with it because they don't know how to play over songs that have the same chord for a long period of time like this one and like tunes like So What, which is D minor seven, you know, for 16 bars. Uh, it can sometimes be difficult to come up with lines that sound interesting when the chords don't change. Hopefully the bass line that I've prepared for this lesson will help in this regard. The second topic I wanted to talk about would be ways to effortlessly shift from one position on the bass to, to a different position. And we'll be focusing on two main positions today. The first being what we often call half position if we're playing the upright bass. And that would be from the open E, A, D, and G strings up to about the third fret on the bass. So where we have the notes G, C, F, and B flat. The second position, most popular position for jazz playing at least on the upright bass would be what we would call the neck heel position. And on the electric bass, that will be from roughly the 7th to 9th frets on the electric. Somewhere in this position here with the octave E on the A string. So with those two things in mind, let's now have a listen to the walking bass line. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
first topic we're going to look at is walking over static chord changes. And so the first example comes from chorus one, the first line where we've got an entire bar of D minor. The first thing that I like to do is you know, target the root of D minor in the first bar and then try to get to the fifth of D minor for the second bar. And then for the third bar, get back to D and that's basically the process, right? So we're gonna start off, the walking line starts off walking down D Dorian and then a flat note, B flat, getting to the fifth. I'm gonna walk back up to D. There's notes from D minor. And then we're gonna to get to G minor. Same type of idea for two bars of G minor, but this time we're not gonna to go to the fifth in bar two, we're gonna to go to the octave of G. We're gonna start on a low G and then go up to the octave and then get to E minor seven flat five. Okay, we'll just keep on walking through this. Nice triplet. And now the third line of chorus one, for, this, for the second time we've got multiple bars of D minor. We're gonna walk up D Dorian to the fifth A, and then a walk up to the octave. And we're just gonna keep on doing a walk up to the root of G minor. And now we're up in this high sort of neck heel-ish position. I'm on the uh, eighth fret of the A string at the moment, that's F. Octave. And now we come to, I guess what would be the first example of playing in a different position, walking in a different position. So this neck heel position, as I'm calling it, is not really a neck heel position for the bass guitar because that would be way up higher. Where the, neck, where the neck meets the body of the bass guitar, but for the upright bass, this is roughly where it would be. So we're now on the E natural note on E minor seven flat five. Now this is a nice position to be in when you're playing in D minor because there are so many notes in the key of D minor that fit right under the fingers, right? You've got this E, D, B flat, A, got an F here and you've got an E here. And if you go down further to the E string, you've also got a C and a C sharp. <laughs> a bit hard to see there, but it's on the ninth fret of the E string where the marker is. So this position is really nice for the key of D minor. Lots and lots of stuff that you can do up here. So we'll keep on walking through. Now this is a great place to play a triad of D minor and then open D string. See, see how that works? playing D, seventh fret, G string, seventh fret, D string for A, eighth fret, A string, F, and then open D and shift back. Open string, shift to this position where we're gonna play A on the D string. Now this is another great position if you play the upright bass as well, it's also great for the bass guitar. You've got a lot of these nice notes that you can make use of. See that? We've got root, open D string, fifth A, and then we're going to do a little two passing notes, C, C sharp, D, to get to the root, G sharp to get to the fifth, and E flat to get back to the root. So really trying to make use of as many of these notes that are in this position of the bass that I can while I'm here. You could play this G as an open string to help you shift back down, but I chose to play it on the fifth fret. Whoops, let's play this correctly. Shift back down. And now we're back down in this first position or half position region. Once again now I'm going to play open D and shift to this neck heel position. I'm going to play A on the seventh fret of the D string, E, E flat, D. 
A, F, E. So you see how all these notes fit so perfectly. And then once again, open D string, really making use of that open note, open D, so I can shift right back down. Open A and shift. Now we're going to play this passing note passage where we play D octave and we're going to walk down every note. Now walking up, half position. Still half position, one shift to what I guess we would call first position on the upright bass. Notice how I'm not shifting unless I have to. Like there, to get that A flat. Now there's a pretty big shift here that happens in the fourth line of the third chorus. We're gonna have to play F, A, and then we've got a spot our D and shift and play that with the first finger. And now we're back in this neck heel type position. Triplet. Now that's a very, very easy triplet. Looks very complicated, but again, it's E. And then we're gonna just rake down G string, D string, A string, E string, all the way down. E, B flat, E, open E string. Now I know you can't see what my right hand's doing, but it's just raking down all the notes. G string, D string, A string, E string, just one finger. Then I shift back. Now we're going to walk up the bass. Through a couple of positions. This is probably the way that I would play this passage. You can play it like this. Use open G, G sharp, and then shift, but I think it's a bit more natural to shift here and play the G on the fifth fret. And then shift again, shift back. Shift again, open, you can play F and F sharp all in this position as well. Again it's a bit tough to see, I'll start again from the third line of chorus 4, open string, 5th, 9, 5th, open, 5th, 9, passing note. And to make this um, next bit a bit easier, I'm actually going to bar the notes D and A, play the two Ds as eighth notes, and then just sort of roll the bar over. F. You can play F sharp with the ring finger, but I'm just in the habit of playing it with the pinky. And now open string, G. And then play the triplet. Now this triplet's pretty easy. You're going to play F on the 3rd fret, open G, and then just rake down D, open D, and then land on C. That's all with the same finger. Right, that's the full walking bass line. So I hope you took away a couple of ideas from this, ways that you can shift up and down the neck and uh, different ways that you can approach walking over static chord progressions. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. As always, if you'd like to download the full baseline, you can check it out on my Patreon page linked below and you can download it in both standard and tab notations. Thanks very much. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.